Hello and welcome to the Valorant Esports Recap. My name is Reapermeister and today we are covering the third European event of the Ignition series, the Mandatory.gg Cup. Unlike the PAX Invitational in NA, this is an open tournament with a 128 team single elimination bracket. This large bracket meant that up until the quarterfinals, matches would be best of one. Four straight rounds of win the map or go home. A format with a high likelihood for upsets. The biggest story going into this tournament, and possibly the biggest story of European Valorant Esports, is the dominance of G2 Esports. This team won both previous European Ignition Series events, and are heavy favorites going into this one. To make this worse, the EU scene is much less developed compared to NA when it comes to teams being signed by esports organizations. Many of the best teams and players in EU Valorant go completely unsigned. The how and why of this could honestly take up its own video, but the point is that many of these rosters and individuals do not have the job security of a signed contract and are still trying to prove themselves in a way G2 Esports doesn't have to worry about. It's impossible to cover every match of the first four rounds of this tournament, but there is one major upset we should discuss. Fish 1-2-3 were the runners-up in the last European Ignition Series event, losing to G2 in the finals 13-9 and 13-8. The team is led by former Counter-Strike star Scream, and has gained a decent fan base off the back of his stream. Additionally, they are rumored to have been signed by Team Liquid, but with no official announcement, we can only assume that each tournament they play under the Fish 123 banner is a test to see how the team develops. Despite the potential of this roster, they were eliminated by TBD, a CIS team making their tournament debut 13-6, finishing just outside of the top eight. G2 Esports, Dream Chasers, TBD, BBL Esports, Ninjas in Pajamas, Those Guys, Bonk, and 9X were the eight teams able to advance to the corner finals and the best of threes. Unfortunately, only one match and one map of the quarterfinals was streamed by the official broadcast, but I can still give a quick summation of each match. G2 vs Dream Chasers was the only match streamed in its entirety. G2 showed utter dominance in the first map with a now signature aggressive style. God, he heard it here first. Oh dear. No, 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 no. How is it? How's he done this again? Yeah. Someone! David Pete walks through these walls every single day. He just has a wander. He's loving it. Look at it. Get out of my way. How has he just got three of them? I don't know. The first eco around that Dream Chase to find them on is going to be GG. Is going to go for this push through tree and it's That's not... That's huge. Yeah, it's not looking... As if it goes the way I would have expected that one to. Three members of G2 will fall. Kit will get the spike down in front of Generator. Ardis is struggling through mid right now. So see if they can hold on to this post one. Ardis will find one. That's a good start. Yeah, but there's an instant trade. They're not letting this get too far away. Aaron's on the site. Tickles the old bomb. Door now gets blown. He's off the defuse. Al drone in. Nice work. Gonna get enough. What? Ooh. The second map was a much closer game, but G2 would eventually pull ahead and close cleanly after gaining the momentum. They move on to the semi-finals with a clean 2-0, 13-5 and 13-7. Uh, carry a weapon through as David P goes looking for a 1v2. <laughs> Just juggling the phantoms, he's going to get them close enough, I think, to try and revive somebody. I mean, they're going to hear this from a mile off, you can see King Cobra going to try and blast back off the door, but... Caught up in the slow warp now. Is he gonna now, get one? Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's worth at this point. Oh, oh now he's gonna wall, wall it. Yeah. Okay, the wall and res, and he gets mixed wall back up. And don't forget, that's oh, gonna be a weapon. Oh, and a really oh. nice wall bank from King Cobra. Yeah, out from there. So, see if they can find any initial openings. And once again, it's a first blood for G2 as they peek on round and Pat gets himself a second and a third headshot all day long. And this is not what Dream Chasers had in mind after just picking up oh. that thrifty. Pat gets the four. Sights of the spike plant will go down. It's going to be a passive sit and retake. Oh, the Hunter's okay. Fury from Ardis. Oh, oh my word. Wiped out the spike planter and a second next to him. Oh, lordy. Uh, okay. There's something. Despite TBD coming off a big upset against Fish123, Turkish squad BBL Esports was able to quickly take the series 2-0 winning 13-4 and 13-9. They would move on to face G2 in the semifinals. On the other side of the bracket, Ninjas in Pajamas was running a marathon of a tournament, 
barely eking out an overtime victory in their final best of one match and playing the only quarterfinal to go to game three. Fortunately for NIP, they were able to close out the final game against those guys. Waiting for them in the semifinals would be Bonk, who quickly won their series against 9x 2-0, winning 13-5 and 13-6. As a Turkish team, BBL Esports was an unknown quantity for G2. You can see this in the early aggression from G2 as they test BBL to see if they can properly punish. The Turkish squad kept up fairly well until a bad retake led to a broken economy that let G2 take the first map 13-9. This gave G2 the momentum they needed to convincingly take the next map 13 to 7, moving on to the grand finals. This is something I like. It's very much, you know, Inferno banana control. It's very, very valuable. Oh, just gonna get seen Ed. Now you can see the flex coming through from short, but he loses it. Oh this, you're an animal. Where's that third just come from? Rust just goes down. Oh, this single-handedly has just destroyed this round for them. And he's gonna get more. Of course he is. It's all this. I think they're literally the reason they've planted in this corner, Lauren, is because they want to play off the shock balls. So let's, yeah, I'd love to sit in that perspective, see if we can watch Ardis hit. Oh, the Hunter's Fury. Oh, he's got the yeah. ultimate. Yeah, he's got it all. They've drawn that out. They're trying to run the time down, which is good. Caro finding David P. Oh, no. <gasps> what? Okay. BBL backs against the wall. Everything to play for here if they want to keep Haven going. But uh, two players up in heaven. This is difficult. The showstop is actually going to get popped, and that's going nice. to find Mixwell on default. Russ has got to swing onto graffiti here, but the crossfire is good. Pitt will find one, and he will find his third on the round there. Shut that one down and put G2 one map up against BBL. Aslan gets the one, but it's a 2v1. Aslan, bike still not down. The rotate's coming through. They're going to work it and double peek it. David P, Aslan's ready for this. Oh, he's looking the opposite way. Oh, we've got the head. He's the head. Got to see it. David will catch it. Aslan goes down. G2 will take it. They're into the grand finals in a 2-0 sweep of BBL. The story of the second semifinal really became the story of the Ninjas and Pajamas organization in Valorant. NIP first entered Valorant with a World Championship Paladins roster, but COVID and the lack of motivation led them to drop that entire roster for a more CS-centered one. While most of the Paladins players moved on, Bonker took NIP stand-in Yasin and formed his own team, Bonk. This semifinal being the first time Bonk faced their former organization and a huge chance to prove themselves as serious competitors looking to be signed by an org. Map 1 showed just how close these teams can be as they go blow for blow until Bonk is able to close out the map 13-10. Map 2, by comparison, looked like an entirely different set of teams. The inexperience of Bonk, who at this point have only played Bind in a professional tournament once, showed completely in their gameplay. They were unable to form proper site entries, they would hesitate on rotations, and NIP would only have to play standard setups to completely shut down Bonk 13-4. Fortunately for Bonk, they were able to quickly brush off their loss and start the final map with an early 4-0 lead. NIP would recover just as quickly and tie the game up almost immediately. It took a superstar performance from Yasin and Safe, dropping 25 and 23 kills respectively, to push Bonk to the finish line. They would move on to the finals to face G2 after a 13-9 finish and a 2-1 series victory. Hip is ready and waiting. Cut off at the side. Look at there. Oh, quick and dirty on Aaron there. Slice as you like. Gets himself a second. Go for the third peak. Makes it a third. Go for the fourth. Why not? Up to Winova. Finds his head. And that is look at just putting paint to B site and saying no. And now the 1v2. This time going to be tough for Bonkar. Going to find one. Does he find the second? He's got to be quick on this, though. Doesn't have a lot of time to mess with that. Done for. He's trying to get it to halfway. He's I'm doing so everything he can. He soaked the hit. That's so smart. He got that. That could be the sickest thing. Is he got this? That was so well played. He soaked the last hit. Took the fight afterwards. Bonka. Chef's kiss. Four exactly. before retake. Who'd have thunk it? Post plant. Yasin finds hip. It's looking good for Bonk. All these trades are going effective for them. And now NIP down to just the sober. Where is it? Already on the site, fear off there. Creeping at all the cage. Tempting. That's one. Does he spot the second though, Lee? This is gonna be tough. 
Side <laughs> fear off with a massive 4K. And trying to wall it off here. He's going to go for the res on oh, the SC. And he's back on his feet. But yes, Creer is back in the backside of A. They have no they idea. Have no. Oh, the double, the double cross. Rhyme of fear off going down. That's the little bit of luck that maybe Bonk needed. I need to temper expectations a bit for this grand final. Bonk is a great team and are looking to be a top prospect for any esports organization looking to enter European Valorant. G2 is by far the best team in European Valorant, with very few that can contest them. As more orgs enter the EU scene, teams will grow to match G2. Stability becomes longevity and leads to mastery. Currently, only G2 have that stability. Bonk played a close series, but it never really felt like G2 wasn't in control. It took until G2 was up 2-0 for Bonk to even take a lead in a single map. Even that was short-lived as G2 won 9 rounds in a row to close out the tournament and become 3-time back-to-back-to-back Ignition Series champions with a perfect tournament. Not a single map dropped. And then the graphical area, but... Nothing netted, unfortunately, for Bonkar. We're with the Hunter's Fury, David Pete. Just a rub insult will resurrect Artis. And now they are pushing in on site. Bonkar, the last man, the captain of his team, doing what he can. But it will be G2 that will come out on top. And it's David P that shuts down the round. 13 5. G2 are your winner of the Ignition Series for the Mandatory GG Cup. Congratulations to G2 Esports, and thank you all for watching this video. I plan to make a video for every NA and EU Ignition Series event, and I also have plans for more Valorant Esports related content, so be sure to like and subscribe to know when that happens. Thank you again, and I'll see you guys in the next video.